In this video, I'm going to take a deeper dive into the drag and drop widget. So the first time I looked at the drag and drop widget in the all new Adobe Captivate, I kind of gave Adobe a failing grade. I'm not entirely sure that this video is going to give them a pass on this particular widget, but I've since learned that there are some things that you can do to improve this widget. Um, and I still think that Adobe needs to look at how they've configured this widget. Because uh, number one, it's not very intuitive. I find that some of the things are kind of buried within the widget and it's not very clear that you can make these sorts of changes. The other reason I still think that Adobe needs to relook at this widget is that, and I'll explore this a little bit later, is that I don't think I would describe this widget as truly responsive design. In fact, there are a few examples of some of the blocks and widgets in Adobe Captivate that kind of cheat the concept of responsive design. But we'll save that maybe for another video. But I will show you where I think that it doesn't quite work in this particular widget. Okay, so I have just a blank slide in this new project in Adobe Captivate 12. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a new widget and select drag and drop from here. So I think my first criticism of Adobe would be you could make this uh, default widget a lot more simplified so that people can intuitively set this up for the content that they're trying to create here. And it would be very simple to do. I think first of all, with the, with the widget selected here, if I select the, the drag and drop widget, I would just simply turn off this background image. I'm also going to uh, turn off the solid fill background. Uh, this is more of a preference for myself here. I'm going to move up to the slide level and change that solid fill background to an image. I'll select an image from the assets library here something fairly neutral instead of the images of people jumping around and stuff like that. This is just sort of a cardboard crinkled paper look, which I think is kind of nice here. We can start to populate this content though. Let's take a look at what we've got here and I'll just populate some text from a plan that I've got for an interaction such as this one here. And we'll just put in our explanation of what this is all about here. I also have some text for the drag and drop instructions, which is lower on the page here. You could leave the default here, but it's kind of generic. I prefer something more specific to the scenario that you're actually asking people to use. What we'll do is we'll add some captions to our drop targets here. Now in this case, I only have three. So the very first thing I'll do once I finish copying and pasting this stuff is we'll go back to the visual properties inspector of the widget and we'll reduce the number of drop targets to three. So that's what we're working with here. The part that I think isn't very intuitive and why I missed it last time was if I want to customize my drag objects to be something other than images, which I didn't even think was possible, uh, counterintuitively, I need to select the card component and then go into the visual properties of the card group and select either images only, which is the default, text only, if that's what I want, or a combination of both, which I think I prefer in this case. If I chose uh, to turn off the drag card, I would have never discovered that you can customize your drag objects to be images, text, or a combination of both. So before you do turn off the drag card, if you don't need one, you certainly would want to configure that component first. So now that I have that, I can, of course, uh, populate the examples that I'm doing here. I almost wish that they would put uh, dummy text in here because I think 
uh, it could be easy to forget that there's some default text that actually is normal English. So I'm going to make sure that these are uh, my text and not the text that was here beforehand. And there we go. Now, you could select the replace image icon for each of these or use the replace image icon that's in the visual properties inspector. But here's a shortcut. If I just simply drag the images from my computer, I can plop them right onto these placeholders and populate this interaction with my own custom images, which is, as you can see, very easy and quick to do. And then, of course, all I need to do is click on the individual images, edit the image, and then maybe adjust the crop size for, you know, this particular image here. We'll do the same thing for maybe this last one here, just so that the guy is centered within the space that I have for him there. So that works well. Pretty much everything is configured now with my content. The only thing left to do is configure your captions, because obviously you're gonna get feedback captions when you submit this. So we'll click on show. I'm gonna move this to the center. I'm not a big fan of the colored feedback caption, but if I select that, I'll see the multi-state panel for this object. And I can do things like, you know, change the color of these feedback captions if I wish. So you could just make them more generic like this. And uh, I'll choose white for that as well. You can move the, the multi-state panel to anywhere you like. Before we continue on with that, Related to captions, of course, is the number of attempts. So you're only going to get a, an incorrect caption if you have a single attempt. But if you want to allow your learners multiple attempts or even unlimited attempts, it's going to add a that's incorrect try again caption, which allows the learner to reset the interaction and give it another go. The last thing that you need to do uh, with configuring a drag and drop, if you're using it as a knowledge check or a final quiz question, is to configure it. So we have our object one. It would be nice to see the text that's here, but that's okay. And we'll just choose the drop targets that we're going to be going to for this one here. So for the first one, it's apology and resolution. The second one is problem solving. The third one is uh, apology and resolution, and then problem solving again. Press save, and then we're pretty much good to go. There is one optional last thing that you could do if this is a quiz question rather than a knowledge check. You could include in quiz, which will add a result slide to your project if it isn't already there and you can assign points, add to total, and maybe include this as part of an interaction report in your LMS by selecting report to LMS. Uh, you could input a unique uh, interaction ID, like maybe drag, drop, zero, one, or something like that, so it's easy to identify on that report what we're actually looking at here. So let's preview this. Let's take a look at this and make sure it works as expected. I'm just going to minimize and move my play bar out of the way here and press play. So here's our interaction. So the very first thing here is we're going to take this guy and I'll do the wrong answer first. We'll just put these in some random positions here and hit submit. That's incorrect. Try again. So I'll reset this. And now I can make another attempt. Before I do that, I want to show you what this interaction is going to look like on a tablet, right? So that to me, you know, you've got this scroll bar on the bottom here, which will scroll the drop targets. And you can see some of the problems with our title and our introduction text here. It's not really great. And obviously it's even worse on a mobile phone here. To me, the definition of responsive design is that this content should rearrange itself to fit the screen and not necessarily give you a left to right scroll bar 
so you can see all the content. So to me, this doesn't quite work. Let's go full screen here and we'll finish this interaction here. So this guy goes over here and this one goes over here. And I think this one goes here and this one goes here and then submit, that's correct. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. And of course our learners could continue with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.